awareness goes up. It does to the, it has a paralyzing effect on the brain. And that's why after people eat meat, what do they do? They fall asleep, right? Because of the hypoxanthine that's in there. Now, according to the Bible, when God's people ate meat, what was the oldest the meat should be? No, not three days. It was supposed to be thrown out the third day. Two days. It couldn't be more than two days old. The third day it was to be thrown out. Now, the meat that's in the markets, is it grown here and cut here? Mm -hmm. It's coming from where? Texas. By the time it reaches the shelf in the markets, it's already past two days old. Right? Yes. So that's why people are falling asleep, because of this chemical that's in that meat. And it has a, a paralyzing effect on the brain. Okay. Another thing to re another thing to stay away from is refined products. Anything? Does anyone know why you should stay away from refined products? What did we say? What vitamins are crucial for the brain and the nervous system? What vitamins? You said it. The B vitamins. B. Vitamins. What do they do to rice to make it white? They remove the German, the bran and stuff, right? So do you have the B vitamins in there? No. The grains are very crucial. Remember, the reason grains are so important for mental health is because they're high in B vitamins. When they process the food, they remove all this, and then they turn around and try to fortify it. And they, it's called enriched. If it's enriched, leave it alone. That means they process it and they put their own stuff in there. So if a person is dealing with any kind of mental issues, even Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, anything having to do with the nervous system, the mental, you tell them they have got to get off all refined products. Okay, now we're going to go through some natural ways real quick. And I'm going to go through these kind of quickly. TX is treatment, okay? Hydrotherapy. Hydrotherapy is very important for depression and mental problems, especially depression. Anyone heard of the contrast shower? Mm -hmm. What's a contrast shower? Hot and cold. Hot and cold. Three minutes hot, 30 seconds to one minute cold, and you want to rotate it how many times? Three times. Three times, that's right. She said don't have them do this for more than six months. And then after six months straight, here a little and there a little. She said this particular treatment, the contrast hydrotherapy, raises certain neurochemicals in the brain. These are the neurochemicals, serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. All of these are implicated in depression. Okay, now number two. When your lips are dry, what's that mean? So we need water. You've got to hydrate these people. So important. Do you know that she worked with a lot of patients and when she got them hydrated, the depression was gone just from the water? Yes. Because what does dehydration do to the brain? It shrinks it. Okay. Number three, sunshine. They should be out there a minimum of an hour a day. What did we say was the test for them to have their, their vitamin D's level checked? Do you remember the name of it? The name of the test? Yes, to check for your vitamin D levels. Oh. Vitamin D? Yes. 25. 25 hydroxy. Okay. You do not want them to get the 125 hydroxy. 30% of doctors check the wrong levels, and this is the wrong one. This is the one that you want right here. Now, what is the minimum milligrams per nanograms that our vitamin D level should be? What'd you say? No, higher. 50. It should be a minimum. Medical science just raised it from 20 to 25. Experts will tell you that's way too low. It should be a minimum of 50. And if they have all, uh, autism, is autism a brain disorder? They should be 80 to 100. So yes. Okay, so sunshine. 
Now we talked about if you have troubles going to sleep. Now let me just quiz you guys real fast. If you have problems going to sleep, what time should you be in the sun? 8 to 12. For how long? That's one hour. One hour. If you have problems staying asleep, how long should you be? What time should you be in the sun? Four to five. Yes. And that's in the later months. In the winter months, you probably do it three to four. Okay. Sunshine is also important for what particular hormone or vitamin? Vitamin D, of course. And. The vitamin D levels are crucial for treating depression. She said in most of her cases, when she raises those vitamin D levels up, depression is gone. She said it's not hard to treat the depression. It really isn't in most cases. Give them the hydrate them, put them in the sun, get them busy, and she said the depression, they forget about themselves. Okay. For people with very low levels of vitamin D and have multiple sclerosis, they say 10,000 IUs a day is beneficial, but this is for a short duration, and then have the levels rechecked. You should have them checked like every three to four weeks. Okay, what's another important thing for people who are depressed? We're going through the laws of health. Sleep. What time should they be to sleep by? Ten. And there's a saying, two hours before midnight, are more than four hours after midnight. And we were talking about the circadian rhythm earlier. You want to be asleep by 10 o'clock because between 10 and 12, your body releases toxins. Your body goes through a healing process. And if you are not asleep, those toxins will be dumped into your system. And then that's why you wake up and you're all like groggy and you're feeling tired. But if you go to bed 8.30, 9 o'clock, you'll wake up at 2.33 and feel wide awake and refreshed. That's because your body was able to go through the healing process you were asleep when you were supposed to be. She says more and more teenagers today, she said her patience is becoming more and more teenagers. And why is that? Because they're not getting enough what? Sleep. They're on either the computer, texting, chatting, playing Nintendo or something. She said it's very crucial that we get these children in bed at a decent hour. Okay, number five, proper breathing. Especially if someone is suffering from anxiety. The moment they start having an anxiety attack, tell them to start doing deep breathing outside. And how should we breathe? When we inhale, should our stomach go in? No. If you put air into a balloon, what happens to the balloon? It expands. So when I deep breathe, my stomach should get big. And when I exhale, and contract your stomach muscles. Help push them in. And when you exercise, you should breathe that way. Inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth. Deep breathing is very, very important. She says this is a thing that helps a lot of people dealing with anxiety attacks. They hyperventilate. As soon as they start to feel that, come on, she said, get them to do deep breathing exercises. And be sure to have them keep their windows open every single night. Should we do that? Yes. Even in the winter months? Yes. Okay, now let me ask you a question. Who got depressed in the Bible? Jehovah. I mean, so. Okay. He was full of a demon spirit. And I was a demonic. But let's not, which godly man who did not have a demonic spirit got depressed in the Bible? Elijah. What did Elijah do before he got depressed? Some major event. Mount Carmel. What did he do? He killed what? 850 false prophets, right? He did a great work, great mighty work. Can we get puffed up when we do a great and mighty work for God? This is what the prophet of the Lord says. However courageous and successful a man may be, unless he looks constantly to God when circumstances arise to test his faith, he will lose his courage. Did Elijah lose his courage? That means that he took his eyes off of the Lord and he just put them on himself. Did Sister White get puffed up sometimes? Can we say that? Yes, we can. What did she say in her writing? She told the Lord, when she gets puffed up to do 
what to her? Let her be stricken with her ailment. Did she get stricken a lot? That just shows you that she was a human. And we can do you know, we're not supposed to clap for people. We are not supposed to praise people. That's why I tell people when I do a health nugget and stuff, compliments are nice, but I really don't want them. And I'll tell you why. Because I'm a human. And I don't want praise. I don't want glory. I'm just doing the work of the Lord. Praise God. Tell the Lord thank you. Because I, I don't want to be puffed up. And it's easy to get puffed up. And I have to tell the Lord always, Lord, please help me not to. That's why when people say thank you, I say all glory goes to God. Because that's what happens. You can. It says constantly to God when circumstances arise to test his faith, he will lose his courage. Do we have a big test coming up? What's about to happen? Sunday law, right? Or is the whole world going to be against us? Do we need courage? Yes. So we don't need to be getting puffed up in 2011. Elijah got a little puffed up. But God was merciful, right? Amen. Amen. What did God give Elijah when he was in the mountains? What was he fed? It was fed bread and water, wasn't he? What was it? When he got depressed and he got scared, where was he led to? What does the Bible tell us that is in the hills? Men's fourth cometh my health. Yes. Doesn't God say his health comes in the hills? And look to the hills and stuff like that? Amen. After De uh, Elijah, what did Christ do? Where did he go? He would go to the mountains, right? What's in the mountains? What is that? What? Speak up. Quiet, peace, air. Somebody said the word starts with an N. Nature. That would include the quiet, the peace, the air. Does this have an influence on the mind? Yes, it does. And so if you know someone, where does Sister Y say that our lifestyle center should be? In the country, right? Why? Because it's beneficial. The fresh air, the flowers. All these things. So if you know somebody suffering from depression, if you know when someone got puffed up and now they're feeling down and out and depressed and they're, they lost their courage because they were puffed up one minute, you ever, I've seen it happen all the time. And when I was married, when my husband was still alive, it happened. Wives would brag about their marriages and then all of a sudden some major issue would come into the marriage. You get it? You get puffed up. And then you lose your courage. One day you guys are a great couple, the next day you're talking divorce. Right? So who do we have to keep our eyes on? We have to keep our eyes on Jesus on the cross. That's right. And so when you're dealing with anyone with any type of mental issue, you need to have them in nature. Talk about the park, the city park. Take a walk. You know, go to Apollo Park somewhere. I mean, I know there's dogs out here, but I'd rather them be at the park where the dogs are than in the city where the dogs are. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Try to work with them wherever you can, but get them in nature. Get them among the flowers. Get them among the trees. Tell them to take a ride to Tehachapi, you know, yeah. or to the beach. Or what does the prophet of the Lord say that God's people are supposed to do frequently? Get out into nature. She said we're supposed to get out and go by the lake sides, the mountain sides. Why? We need refreshing in our mind. And I'm not to criticize anyone who lives in Tehachapi, but that's not the nature she's talking about. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Okay, now, we're done for today. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, sister. What do you think of holding cleanse for depression? Holding cleanse for depression? Well, what, do you mean an enema or do you mean the herbs? 